Hi, I'm Jim Carrey, but if you sat through, <laughs> if you sat through all the lesson plans to this point, you already know my name. At this point, let's wrap this all up and wrap it all and, and, and turn it into an integrated package. Let's start with my testimonial again. Six years ago, a little over six years ago, I, I was introduced to Raw Living Foods lifestyle through Creative Health Institute. My sister Carol um, talked me into going up there for their two-week program. Uh, she had studied with Dr. Wigmore back in the 80s. She had spent a couple months at Creative Health herself um, when she was having gallbladder issues and some other health challenges. You know, it, it changed her life and, and saved her life in many ways. So there I was at 240 pounds. I'd been vegetarian for two years. Uh, I was walking three miles a day, five and six days a week, and had myself down to from 260 to 240 and couldn't take the weight off. I went to Creative Health, just out of curiosity, you know, a few days, maybe a week. Um, lo and behold, I dropped 20 pounds in the first two weeks. I dropped 30 pounds in the first month. The, the weight fell off, and yet I was eating everything in sight. I never missed a meal, um, and I've been counting my 1,500 calories for a couple of years, 1,500 calories a day. And I was like, what was that all about? But it turns out I was toxic. My body had wrapped fat molecules around all these toxins. And when I went on the raw living foods, foods lifestyle, my body detoxified itself. That detoxification went on for a couple of years. Two years after I started, I found myself at 170, which is what I weighed back in college. The unexpected bonuses were uh, I had arthritis in my knees every spring, every fall. It was really bad. Everybody said, well, you know, 49 years old, 50 years old, that's normal. Uh, my left elbow, the arthritis was getting worse every year. That disappeared. Um, I mean, it's been, um, well, I was 52 back then. So it's been six years now. No arthritis in my knees. Um, no pain whatsoever in my elbows. It's a miracle. <laughs> Meanwhile, my mental clarity, um, I feel sharper, I feel better, I feel smarter. But in particular, I just feel good every day. From when I wake up in the morning until I go to bed at night, I don't, I, I don't have the pains, that helps a lot. I don't have the things to moan about, that helps a lot. But I just feel a lot better about myself. In many ways, I feel healthier than I felt when I was in my 30s. So that's my raw testimonial. And if you've been around this as long as I have, it's just stereotypical. It's the things you hear all the time. Even when you check the website, and we'll put the name down here, I've got a lot of similar testimonials in particular. My buddy Larry Meggs, retired sheriff's deputy. Um, same stories, same miracle cures, and uh, I mean, we're all doing great as we approach our, as we approach our, as we're well into our 60s. I've worked with a lot of kids on Maui when, in the winters I lived over there. And it's sort of neat to meet kids that are in their 20s and 30s and grew up with a raw lifestyle because the energy they have, the outlooks they have, is just incredible. But no matter your age, it's a big improvement over the standard American diet. The thing I, I'd really like to share is, well, let's, let's start with a 3D graphical example. Um, if we think of our health uh, like this Rubik cube, where we have our physical, mental, and emotional sides, well, if this is physically good, physically poor, um, if this is mentally good, mentally poor, etc., you see there's a lot of relationships here. And to really feel good, well, this would be like I feel good physically, mentally, but I don't feel good emotionally. The thing that a good diet does for us is standardizes one side of this cube, if you will. It, it guarantees that physically I feel good. Now, the funny thing about the body is that when the body feels good physically, after a while, the emotional 
and the mental side. Actually, physically, I'm, I'm, I'm doing really good. I've detoxified my body. And my mental side starts working better. Why? Because my brain chemistry is better. As we become highly raw, we turn our body from acidic to alkaline. The body thrives on alkaline environment. Cancer thrives in an acidic environment with a, high, with a low oxygen content. That's the standard American diet. We're acidic with a, low, with a uh, low oxygen content to our blood. When we become highly raw, our body becomes alkaline and the oxygen content of our, of our blood goes up. And that's why cancer cells wither and die. Cancer goes into total remission. They even say, oh, you were misdiagnosed, you never had cancer. No, the cancer was cured. The body destroyed the cancer cells because of the alkaline, high oxygen environment. But while that's affecting the body here, it's also affecting my brain. So since my brain is acidic with this, I mean alkaline, with this high oxygen content, the brain comes to a more normal cycle. In other words, mentally, I become better. And when my brain balances out to a normal, a healthy, I guess that's a better way to put it, rather than say normal in today's standard American diet world, to a healthy alkaline high oxygen environment, emotionally I stabilize. That's why you see videos out there about healing mental illness with, with foods. As a matter of fact, back in the 1970s, um, Dr., uh, Dr. David R. Hawkins, MD, PhD, wrote a book called Orthomolecular Psychology. And in that book he held out that most psychological problems can be solved through diet and exercise. Oh, isn't that what we've been saying for the last 13 episodes? In other words, the psychological problems in the brain are caused by chemical imbalances that are caused by the input, the food, the improper foods we're putting into it. So, physical, mental, emotional fall into place through good body chemistry, good body chemistry coming from good diet. Now, consider that the body is truly made up of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual components. That would be like a Rubik's Cube like this, this 16-sided Rubik's Cube. Well, the moment I start twisting this around, which I did a little earlier, you see how difficult it becomes to put it all back together. But if I put good food in my body, if I take care of the physical, as we saw a moment ago, the mental and emotional sides put themselves together. Well, of course, if physical, mental, emotional have put themselves together, then the spiritual must fall into place. Spiritual. I'm not going to talk Christianity, Zoroastrism, Hindustani, Mohammedism, uh, um, Buddhism. I'm talking about spirituality, not religion. Okay. Um, I've been writing articles about this for years. Here's Christendom International Magazine. Uh, that's me up there in the corner. Um, they've been, they love my articles. But this is printed in Africa, Christendom International. And while it is a Christian magazine, the things I'm going to say, whether you, if you're religious, or like many people, they say I'm spiritual but not religious, even if you're an agnostic, even if you're an atheist, if you see in your life at any point, some spiritual aspect of your life, that's what I'm addressing, okay? So, don't be intimidated by the fact that I'm talking spirituality because I'm really talking to everybody. This is an interesting magazine. Forty years ago, they had a black front cover that said, God is dead. Uh, now in Time Magazine, the recent cover says, How Faith Can Heal. And to summarize the rather extensive article, they're talking about the spiritual aspect of good health. It's a scientifically proven fact um, that people that get prayed for heal faster and better. Uh, they get into philosophies of placebo effect and this and that, but the bottom line is that our brains are hardwired. This actually is identified as a part right up here in the crown, crown chakra. No, no there's a physical part of the brain right behind the frontal cortex. Um, that actually is hardwired into spirituality. And spirituality is so wired into our brain that, as Time Magazine says, there's no getting away from it for a long, long time. When 
I choose to be raw, oh, guess what? It's not a destination. It's a journey. Uh, here's typically what happens and what I want to address in this video. We decide that this is a good idea for us. And in effect, um, our ego is making the decision that I'm going to be raw. I'm going to do this uh, because. And we do that. And we will power ourselves into being highly raw for a couple weeks, a couple months. But at some point, you're going to find yourself backsliding. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I was cheating or I'm failing. No, you're not cheating. You didn't fail just because you went out and, and, and had a hamburger or whatever. You're eating outside of the program. Emphasis number one is eating outside of the program is simply that, eating outside of the program. You didn't fail. You didn't cheat. You ate outside of the program. Even if you're only 50% raw, how much better are you doing today than when you were on the SAD, the standard American diet? But yet, what happens here is it sometimes becomes a spiral death loop, like in an airplane, where we eat outside of the program once this week, and twice next week, and three times the next week. Why did that happen? If I was doing so well on raw, why did I, why, why did I, why am I eating outside of the program? What's happening to my journey? Well, several things. Number one, we thought it was a destination, and once we accomplished it, we say, okay, I did that, now what? No, it's not a destination, it's an ongoing journey, it's the rest of our life thing. So that awareness helps a lot. Number two, we have homeostasis. Now we talked about homeostasis holding me back. Uh, homeostasis is the body's tendency to keep on doing what it's doing even if it's unhealthy. Blood chemistry feels that smoking is normal once you've been smoking for a while. You know, you first start smoking, you cough your lungs out. After a few years, you can smoke three packs a day. Your body thinks it's normal when you try to quit. That overcoming the addiction, the withdrawal symptoms, all these other labels we put on it, it's homeostasis, which is saying, no, I want to be the way I was because I was surviving. Homeostasis is a good thing because of survival mechanism. But when we're trying to overcome an addiction, it's the same thing that pulls us back to the body chemistry it's used to inside the brain. I've been, I've been raw for a few months and the ego sort of relaxes and says, hey, I'm doing good, I'm really raw. Homeostasis says, ah, yeah, but I want to be the way I was because it was the way I survived. Understand, if cooked food is an addiction, then the largest addiction you'd ever have to deal with is cooked food so, because you've probably been doing cooked food since you were somewhere between six months and three years old. Um, that's an addiction once you get to be 30, 40, 50 years old. So the body still wants to pull back that way. Third point, herd mentality. If everybody else was eating raw, if you were living in a raw community, after a while you stop thinking about cooked food. That's happened to me by spending months on end at Creative Health Institute. It was easy to be 100% raw because that's what the food was placed in front of us, that's what everybody else was eating, that was the normal way of life. But when you're living out in the world, especially in America, where people eat most of their meals at restaurants and, and, uh, and grab things for quick on the go, well, herd mentality comes in, where one's, another survival mechanism is doing what everybody else does because that's how they're surviving. Overcoming that is, Strictly back to the mindset of why did I become raw in the first place because it doesn't work. At least it wasn't working for me and in the end it's all about what works for me, isn't it? Um, so the awareness of homeostasis, the awareness of herd mentality, and the awareness that the ego has relaxed and the body comes back in, let's call that the id, to use the Freudian terms of id, ego, super ego. The id cuts back in and says, I want to go back to doing what I was because it worked all my life. And homeostasis says, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens at this point is one of two things. You go back to cook food, you say, this is too hard, I give up. Or you start dealing with these internal things of why am I being drawn back? And at that point, when we're dealing with the internal things, that becomes a superego saying, I want to do this because. And then we put ourselves in position of, 
I, I need to sidebar here into, I don't believe that my past has pushed me into my present. I believe that my choices, my day-to-day -day choices, my goals and my intentions, I believe that my goals and my intentions are pull, pulling me into my future. I do that through my day-to-day -day choices. That comes from the superego, the spiritual side, if you will, uh, to use the Freudian definition. As I start making peace between my ego and my superego, my body and my spiritual side, is not about overcoming the ego, I find that it's about making friends between the two. Um, I overcome the ego by saying, I'm going to do this. I make friends with the ego by saying, I'm going to live this way. That becomes the first step of another whole path. Um, because as I befriend my ego instead of overcoming it, I find myself questioning my other thought patterns because it started with questioning my diet. And as I questioned my diet, I said, oh, oh, you know, everybody else believes this, but it doesn't work. Well, that everybody else believes it, does, but it doesn't work. That's what we call a social moray. Um, like, we all know the world is flat would be a good example. And we all know that the universe revolves around the Earth, or another example. We all, oh, wait a minute. We don't believe that anymore, do we? Uh, well, for a long time we did. And... Men believe that. We laugh now, but men believe that just because everybody else did. Just as most people believe the standard American diet is healthy. If I have tomato and lettuce on my hamburger, that makes it healthier, right? No, not really, although that tomato and lettuce is probably the only thing keeping a lot of people alive. Once we've, quite, once we've come to the realization that the social more of diet is incorrect, we find ourselves waking up to questioning many other things in our life. And the moment you find yourself doing that, you're on this new path. Uh, you're, you're on the new cycle. This new cycle is, so much of this is about overcoming victimization. Um, suddenly we realize that it's not my mother's fault that I'm heavy, it's not the fault of how I was raised, it was not the fault of anything that I have all this weight or I have this health challenge at all. It's the realization, it's really in the end my fault. It's about overcoming victimization and taking responsibility for my own actions, for my own behavior. Um, and yet there becomes a there often becomes a level of guilt associated with that. And that level of guilt can be almost debilitating. Uh, let me speak this way. Let me just speak in the first person. As part of my personal spiritual journey, I was dealing with forgiveness and forgiving everybody. And I did. I forgave everybody in my life. However, I found myself in situations where I forgive her for what she did, sometimes, three, sometimes five times in three minutes. <laughs> I forgive her, but I forgive her, I forgive her, I forgive her. When I became raw, I woke up one morning and realized that everything in my life had conspired together to put me exactly where I am today. And I'm really happy where I am today. I'm really happy doing what I'm doing. The experiences of my life, every, sing, every single thing that happened in my life conspired together to put me where I am today. You change any one little thing in there, especially the major things, the thing, no matter I thought they were good or bad, Change those things, and I wouldn't be where I am doing what I am today. Change a couple little things, I never would have met Creative Health Institute. I never, I never would have experienced this path. So if everything in my life is good right here and right now, then everything that ever occurred in my life is good. Therefore, there's nobody to forgive. There's only people to thank. Even if it was an unpleasant experience at a time, it becomes an experience of thankfulness. And, um, or as... What one, one teacher says, an attitude of gratitude. Well, as I passed into that stage, I also saw that there was nothing to forgive myself for. Um, what I did yesterday, I did yesterday. If I ate outside the program, I ate outside the program. But because of my intentions of being healthier, of being happier, of being wiser, I'll make better decisions today. Hey, what I did yesterday, I did. It's over. Um, but I'm going to try harder, and I'm going to 
try, I'm going to, I'm not going to try, I am going to achieve my goals and focus stronger on them today. Many would call this a path to enlightenment. Well, that's the deep, dark, little secret of Dr. Ann's program. I've spoke before about Dr. Ann and healing the temples and finding her mission and raw foods being her mission. But the real secret was that she saw this living foods as a path to enlightenment. And again, back to the example of as I put the physical in order, the mental, emotional, and spiritual tend to fall into place. So you can pick up many books of, about enlightenment written by all, written along all the different religious paths. But in each of them, changing the body chemistry makes the rest of this path so much easier. And what Dr. Ann was really teaching was enlightenment. But that's our little secret. And that's why when we talked about the importance of attitude and healing, how I'm overcoming diabetes, I'm overcoming heart disease, that's the mental aspects of it. Um, but it's all about setting us on that path. I mean, we talked about things about it's not easy being green or raw because of the herd. Um, I want to remind you it's a lifestyle choice and we don't justify it. Um, again, it's a journey, not a de destination. But in the end, once we start down this path, life really becomes an amazing journey. One of two things happen. We give it up, we go back to the old way, or we find ourselves on a path that I get to the point where it's so hard to describe this. I mean, how do you describe love? You know, define love. Define a tree. Um, define a sunset. I mean, you know, we say a picture is worth a thousand words. I think an, an experience is probably worth 10,000 pictures. Amazing journey doesn't do it right. We find ourselves in a place of renewed and strengthened spirituality, suddenly we find ourselves living in the miraculous. We don't fall in love with the world so much as we are in love with the world. Everywhere we go is beautiful. Everything we see is beautiful. Everybody we encounter is wonderful. Even when something is what maybe one used to call a negative experience, suddenly one's seeing it through the eyes and the experience of another and it's understood, it's accepted. Even liking or disliking something becomes a non sequitur. It becomes, it doesn't matter. Life becomes a wondrous experience that's always joyous, it's always wonderful, it's always pretty, it's always neat. People come to my spiritual lectures more than any other, and they all come with the same question of, I've been doing raw for six months, six years, three months, whatever the number is, and I find myself much more spiritual. How is this? Why is this? And where am I going with this? Well, guess what? That's the unexpected bonus. As far as where you're going with it, <laughs> it's, a it's a personal spiritual journey. Nobody, nobody can define it for you. Um, You'll find yourself walking down a path and it is it truly becomes your path at this point. Oh, read the book. There's thousands and thousands of books on the subject. I've read several dozen myself. I'm not going to give you a favorite. The stepping stone I'm on today on my personal spiritual journey is not the same one I was on a month ago and is not the same one I'll be on two weeks from now. Understand and accept that is normal for any journey just like the raw food path is often two steps forward, one step back, the spiritual journey is much the same, two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes we're granted a gift of a big leap forward, a moment, if you will, of, of I don't have a, I have to use a Western term, for, I mean a Eastern religion term for it, like Satchitananda or Bogusofra, in which one has a transcendental, exp transcendental experience of oneness with the world. Well, these are big jumps forward. It's also very common that it's sort of like seeing the common attractions. It's sort of a preview. It's very common that one is brought back to where one was, maybe even takes a couple steps 
in reverse. Not that I think that there is a better or a worse, a right or a left. Um, it's sort of like light and dark, uh, heat and cold. I mean, there's light in the absence of light. The spiritual journey is much the same. Um, if you consider it a journey of a thousand flagstones, each one is a great place to be. And where I am today is exactly where I belong today, and I'm on exactly the right step. As she is on the right step, and he is on the right step, all, each of us is exactly where we belong today. No one of those steps is better or worse than any other. I believe we need to stand on each one and experience each one before we can experience the next one. And if we're back a few and ahead a few, that's sort of the journey, two steps forward, one step back, spiritually as well as mentally, physically, emotionally. I'm here to assure you that, number one, you're not going crazy. These, these spiritual experiences are normal. I think many, many generations ago, it's what our ancestors were, were experiencing. I think it's the reason that so many spiritual paths, as you get into them, are so parallel, so similar. That's why I find the same parables from Buddha, Krishna, and, and Jesus. Um, truth is, and I think when our ancestors lived a natural life, I think they lived these spiritual paths much more commonly than we do. So it's great to be back where great, 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 great grandpa was. And it's an interesting journey, an interesting place to be. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And for me, the single largest motivation now of being raw and the single largest motivation of staying raw is what's happening in my life spiritually. Oh, the physical thing is great. I've never felt better. I wouldn't trade the physical thing for the world, but the motivation to stay raw, the motivation to, to, to live outside of the standard American paradigm is what I'm experiencing spiritually, and this is beyond and far outside of anything I ever dreamed of, anything I ever thought that a person could experience. So enjoy the journey. Feel free to email me. Uh, watch the website. So I'll, I'll, um, on annwigmore.com in particular, I'll post these articles and the things that they're running in Africa in Christendom International Magazine. Uh, I'll continue to put them on andwigmore.com and chidiet.com blog. Aloha and mahalo for watching. For more information shared on Grassy Roots, check out grassyroots.com. Well, Jim, what are you doing? Cleaning your kitchen. Any reason? Small town TV <laughs> station. Nobody else cleans up around here. They do their cooking shows, go home. I resemble and they that leave. remark. You resemble that remark? <laughs> <laughs> are you doing cooking shows behind my back? There I thought might you be were some like some of that going on here. I thought you were like only exclusively mine. There might be some cooking going on behind oh, your back. Oh, not <laughs> I don't that know you're about cooking. shows, but there might be some cooking going on. Well, here. you didn't get me washing the dishes and mopping the floor in my or scrubbing the floor in my hands and knees. No, and I, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe because, you should have turned the camera on so we could head evidence. <laughs> it has to do with the union rules around I, here. I though. prefer the kitchen fairies. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know who the kitchen fairy is. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> uh, I'm um, not the kitchen fairy. You're not the kitchen fairy? I'm the kitchen genie. Oh, okay. Genies are cool. Look, it's let's get back to the point. <laughs> I had a surprise for you this week. Yes, you did. Okay. And not the surprise of that I do wash dishes and scrub floors. The surprise is, for the last episode of this season, we have cherry berry cheesecake. And look at all the good stuff we have for it today. Yeah, I don't see any cheese. There's a substitute for all dairy and meat and animal products. Okay. For every cooked food, there's a substitute. Okay. And we're going to have a substitute for that. We have strawberries, blackberries, fresh dates, um, soaked almonds, which I dehydrated because if you soak them uh, and you leave them out, they'll get moldy in a few days. Mm -hmm. But if you dehydrate them, they'll last for months. And you got rid of that enzyme on it. Remember about the enzyme? Right, right. right the one that inhibits, inhibits it from, from sprouting, from sprouting. Mm -hmm. also inhibits digestion. So by soaking these overnight, it took care of that. Okay. And we have unsulfured, unsweetened grated cheese. So unsulfured. I unsulfured. Mean, not grated cheese. Uh, 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 coconut. coconut. <laughs> Let me make sure. Um, you kept saying cheesecake. I'm trying to show you cheese. Tastes fine. Why would they sulfur it? Because it keeps it white. 
You know how you do dehydrated bananas and they get a little brown? Mm -hmm. If you put a little sulfur gas in there, it wouldn't do that. Where do you get sulfur gas? Is that good for you? you <laughs> no, it's a poison. <laughs> I didn't think so, but I Fire, did, brimstone, I did know that people sulfur? used to go to sulfur wells and drink the water thinking it would make them healthy. I guess research has changed people's thinking on sulfur through the years. Yeah. The things they did it's to, all to cosmetic. preserve food through the years was not a healthy to be thing. a bad thing. Right. Okay. And some of them are still allowed. Right. So. Um, um, for cheesecake, you got to have. Wait a minute. I've got a surprise for you. Oh. The student learns more than the teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Welcome, Miss Student. <laughs> You did so good the last two weeks with the children thing and all these things you've been doing. Thank you. That the surprise was, I only do salads. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your book. Oh, thanks. Now we're making a pie. How do you start a pie? Usually you have to have a crust. That's what they tell me. I've not really. You've yeah. never done this. <laughs> so you picked but it Jan out. Jan Jensen wrote this recipe, uh -huh. and she's great at these raw recipes. I've got a lot of hers in the book. Okay. And right here, crust. We start with two cups of raw almonds. All right, that would be this. And that would be soaked almonds. Okay. Yeah. And you're not going to ask me about the white things in Yeah, the I almonds? wonder what, what, it looks like we got a little coconut in there. Well, uh, this is take two. <laughs> <laughs> I picked the dates out, but I wasn't going to pick all that coconut That would have taken out. you a while. Right, I know. So I, and I don't waste food. You know what I am. So this is going to be really sweet. We're going to have... Go ahead and add them. Um, actually, we shouldn't. If we're going to make the recipe according to the book, we've already added okay, it. We, so you can just set that aside. Take two, and we, we're adding... Um, yeah. we're not take adding two, and we don't waste food here. Okay. What's the other thing? And um, half cup pitted dates. Well, that's a full cup. Ah, you should skim ahead. Oh. You oh. got a master's degree. You can skim just because. Darn, I like take one be better. <laughs> <laughs> just because your master's degree is in preschool development. <laughs> she takes her shoes off the cup. I've used that joke. I wasn't going to use it again. Um, yeah, use a half a cup because okay. we're going to use the other half in the sauce. Okay. This is a really rich recipe. It looks rich. I mean, for a hundred percent raw fooder, um, a small spoonful or two is. You think that's about half a cup? Yeah, it's, that's well, this, this is. Again, this anyway. is an art, not a science, because we're not cooking things. Um, co coconut we put in, and <clears throat> a half a, uh, you read it out loud, I don't even say this word. I have a cup of sea salt. Sea salt, But okay. at least it's sea salt. It's transitional, yeah. right, and it's a natural thing, and not iodinized and processized. Right. And not half that. a cup. Did I say half a cup? A half a teaspoon. Ooh, we would not have liked it if we used <laughs> half a cup. <laughs> well, we offset salt with what? That was two weeks ago. That's why the book is page 183. 183, I'm on 152. Oh, you're going to look that up? Yeah, uh, on page lots 183 of the of other water. book. Of the other yeah, book. Yeah, lots and lots of water, right. <laughs> and this is where the bigger, more powerful food processors come in. This would be a good time for a large food processor. Yeah, let's see if the date. The dates are what I'm concerned about because it seems to me they ought to be well distributed to mm -hmm. make it have a moistness. Uh, you can sort of shake it in it's here. I can shake it back in. Yeah, that's just what it is. That dates are what's going to hold your crust together. And I can add a few more too. Let's do that. Let's do that, yeah, because it's not holding together real well. You this back in. You're not yeah. going to have room for all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the Boy, beauty, this is that's a rich the beauty crust. of raw food prep because we're not doing cooking in here. I thought you were going to manifest, well, you're still in the process of manifesting a larger food process. Exactly. Right? Also, too, I wanted to give the editing team a challenge. <laughs> They're going to match the blender sounds. <laughs> yeah, it even sticks to the spoon, so it's, it's, it will. Yeah, you, you can feel that stickiness if you press your fingers uh -huh. against it. <laughs> and you know another thing, um, when you measure a whole strawberry, when it calls for a cup of strawberries, yeah. or a cup of uh, dates, <clears throat> and they're whole Oh, still, I forgot about that. Yes. That would be different than... If I slice those strawberries up like this, uh -huh. if this was sliced, it would take twice as many to fill that cup. Yep. So we yeah. might need even more dates, you know? Yeah. So um, sometimes you might find a recipe that you have to adjust to uh, a little bit. Filling. We're ready filling. for filling. See? See how you're... It's very filling. Third way down the page. Uh, uh, Four uh, cups of fresh cashews. You want me to read along? Well, where is it? The cashews? Mm -hmm. Um, we had cashews. Yes. Where'd we leave the cashews? Here they are. Oh, right. That's because it was so big. And what happened here is we ran out of the unsalted natural cashews I got. Mm -hmm. 
So we ended up with supermarket cashews, and the reason they're so wet is I just rinsed them to get the salt off. Oh, so they're okay. already, we, they're didn't have, we did not have to soak them. Right, but, um, well, if you soak them, they turn to mush. Yeah, uh, but it says to soak them in the recipe. Mm, well, to cover two hours and drained. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that's what I did. But I did it to get the salt off, oh. okay, and they're fine now. Mm -hmm. The salt's just on the outside, yeah. it's not like cooked in. So they're, they're unsalted now. That looks like Work too around. much for this. Um, that's why there's, I mean, it says S-Blade and a food processor. Da, 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 good old Vitamix. You can do everything with a Vitamix. I'll fill it up here. We can do it that way. So we want to um, blend all ingredients and food processor and blend using the S-Blade until smooth and thick. You can sure do smooth and thick in a Vitamix. Oh, yeah. Okay, you probably burn out a inexpensive blender. Four cups of cashews. It's Go all ahead. over there. No, they're right over here. Oh. You're, you're on rewind or something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. And lemon juice. One eighth cup. An eighth of a cup. Did you uh, squeeze cup. several lemons? Oh, you did. I Thank sure you. Because you're better. I noticed you. Yeah, well, that was my tax man grip, you know. Yeah. You remember the joke, bad joke from a couple yeah, weeks I ago? Yeah, I don't have to do that again. Two bananas. Now here's a banana trick that's fun. I mean, I don't really do it, but if you do them, if you do them upside down like this, the stringies come off with the thing. I've never thought of, of an upside down banana before. I and the strings off. don't. The strings don't stick to the. Me you don't have to peel the strings off. See that? I'll be darned. <laughs> oh, you really have taught me something I did not know. I mean, I've always so, and you don't even think it's upside down, but you're right because you're right. That's how the strings work. So you do it upside down. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with them. Okay. Ground flax seed. And we got that. Oh, one teaspoon okay. of ground flax seed. Make it heaping. Don't be shy. Really? Since okay. it doesn't say, yeah, I like flax. Okay. Yep. All right. Good for omega-3s. And again, not a raw food, even though it's called raw honey. The debate's been going on for 50 years as to whether or not it's even vegan. As a sweetener and a binder, that's really what it does a lot of in this recipe. Mm hmm and what's last or next vanilla and you want a teaspoon of this now what's the story on vanilla uh, vanilla extract this is organic that's a great start right mm -hmm. so we have organic vanilla extract um i call it seasoning and spice okay yeah it all falls into the category of you're eating healthier than you were mm. so i don't even worry about this one as to whether or not it's typically a raw food okay it's extract from the vanilla, ban vanilla, vanilla bean. bean. I don't know how they extract that. It's probably done under pressure. Yeah. And being done under pressure, it gets so hot, it's probably technically cooked. Oh. Because most of these are high pressure processes. Right. Okay, how much? A, um, a small tea, that was a teaspoon. Mm -hmm. We learned that several weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get the Vitamix bottom part over here too. We want this to be like a creamy consistency, I guess, because it's the smooth sweet, and thick, thick. And you're going to pour it into the crust. You're going to pour it in. Yeah, the with a spatula. Where's that white spatula? Right there? here. Okay. Okay. You'll need that. You ready? Ready. Wow. Let's see how thick you got that. Okay. Creamy. Oh, it's definitely creamy. Recap what this is it's cashews, cashews, bananas. Oh, and yeah. honey, basically, Whoa. with some vanilla, flaxseed, and lemon juice. <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing. I would never in my life yeah. have thought of such a thing. Yeah, so I'll put it on the website so you guys can look it up tonight. Grassyroots.com slash recipes for the direct link. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the challenge here is supposedly we pour this yeah. into the pie plate. And it's going to be more like trowel it. Ah, there it goes. A nice mortar. A little thick for concrete, but it would make a nice mortar. Unbelievable as it sounds and rich as this is. Yeah. We have a recipe to put a sauce on this. Oh too. my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is like being seven years old again. <laughs> <laughs> I get to lick the spoon. I get to lick the ball. <laughs> sauce. Two cups of fresh pitted cherries or blackberries or raspberries or blueberries. So what I did since we had them both and I wanted to use up the strawberries I don't waste food so we throw the strawberries in the food processor okay. and a half a cup of dates and 
And there's the strawberries. Oh, okay. It's pretty. Do the, do the pitted dates go in the Yeah, same? but you can do it that way. That's fine. Just throw the pitted dates in. Now, because of what we said last time about them being so big, it's uh -huh. a half a cup. I've got a cup here. <clears throat> but I think, actually, as Look a bachelor recipe, that looks. Um, all the dates that fit, we use. Oh. <laughs> oh It's a sauce, so would you put it on the Top whole was, thing or just after, when you serve it? Um, so people can choose how much they want and stuff. I mean, on the little ones, maybe? That's, that's really a chef's call. Mm -hmm. Okay, by the recipe, you put it on, and then they're saying set in the freezer for an hour or more and serve frozen. Okay. Okay, so with the sauce. So but can, okay. there's no reason you couldn't do it the way you wanted. I mean, that's really a chef's call. You do one. Oh, that's girly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got so much. That <laughs> that's the other way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and throw a date on top and blackberry garnish. I'd put those on after I froze it, but just to show what it's like since you got the camera right So there. now we're going. Does it say freeze? Freeze. It does say freeze. Freeze for an hour. No. That's really just enough to set it up. Oh. Yeah. But, you know, uh, that's her serving suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm really excited about trying this out. And um, Here, sit right up there. we'll Show just go ahead out. and do the big one with the sauce, too, you know. That's a lot of sauce. Mm, that's a lot of sauce. In other words. <laughs> I know, but it's got some big <laughs> chunks. I really don't know if I want all the really. Okay. See, that's why you're doing the food prep. Uh -huh. I would have said, there's a the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> A macho guy uncooking show. It's a three layer cheesecake, cherry or berry cheesecake. Cherry berry cheesecake. Well, Jim, it's it's been a whole lot of fun this season putting 13 together. Thirteen weeks these already, isn't that amazing? Of grassy roots. Yeah. And I hope our viewers have, have learned something and experimented a little bit and done some of your own research, maybe, on some of the things we've brought to you that maybe you've never heard about before. I know I have. Um, and look forward to more Grassy Roots episodes. We're going to take a period of time to prepare some new ones. But they just signed me to another 13-week contract, so... Here we go. Yeah, here we go. We're going to do the rest of the Dr. Ann Wigmore lifestyle. Home study program, basically. Well, just to the Dr. Ann Wigmore lifestyle. The home study program is an alternative, but we're teaching what she taught. And with another 13 episodes, you'll have... Her whole lifestyle. The, ba the, ba the basics right. of it In 26 it weeks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 All right. well, it's thanks. been great, Beth. Thank yeah. you. It's been a Thank wonderful you. season. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You've been a great assistant. And even Gracie though she's Roots. the boss. <laughs> GracieRoots.com, of course, is online anytime throughout. And you can go back there and check out what's going on with us. We'll probably have news. Everything we mentioned on the show, book reviews, uh, product reviews, um, Anything we talked about, recipes in particular, we talked about it on the show, it's on the website. And if you would like to see, see more of this type of thing, uh, but purchasing things through the website, like at Amazon.com, does help promote our business. Yeah, and we make a few pennies. So if we there's make a book we've recommended, if you go through Grassy Roots to get to Amazon, then we uh, get a little bit of that to help continue these shows. Great plug, Beth. So, Thank you. So any of that, <laughs> that works, and of course, any... any uh, Donations are always accepted. <laughs> we need a good food processor. <laughs> and thank you for the Vitamix. You know who you are. And thank all you. the great comments we've gotten. Oh, the emails are fantastic. Oh, yeah. Anytime you have yeah. an idea or a comment or something you'd like clarification on, be sure. Or if you want to clarify us on something, we, we're, we're willing and ready to hear anything. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, we're open to everything. Mahalo. Aloha. Thank you.